So can you talk about the incarcerated men and what it is that they're able to gain out of a practice like this? Oh, absolutely. I'll be honest. The first time I did it, I was, uh, well, I, I am one of the things I love about my practice and about me and that connection is the understanding that everybody's got their own path. And, uh, one of the greatest gifts my dad ever gave me was the lesson that like, nobody's better, nobody's worse. We're all just on this path together. Uh, so the first time I went there, it was a little jarring. I'll have to be, uh, I'll be honest because I wasn't afraid of the men, but it was just the whole energy of like, I had to go through like three different doors to get into the hall where I was, I was teaching and, you know, you know, you'd hear gates, you know, uh, bars open up and then slam shut behind you. And then another, I'm like, Oh, okay. I'm really in here now, <laughs> but to your, the, the deeper question, uh, the guys that I was, uh, there with were just amazing. Every one of them, they were kind and attentive and curious and, uh, they all had their own history, obviously. Um, I, I don't know if it was appropriate and I didn't really care why they were there, um, for, uh, for how long, I mean, it was, uh, they were all there for a pretty long time. So I, it didn't really matter to me what they had done to get there. My goal was to help them find a tool to find peace where they are. Uh, and we did, uh, or I did lead a meditation and it was one of the greatest things I like about teaching is hearing the stories that people, uh, of what happens in a meditation. So, you know, I had the meditation and, um, so I, I talked about meditation many, you know, taught them how to meditate uh, from a beginner standpoint, pretty much like what we did just now, but the stories that these guys shared with me, which first and foremost was amazing because I'm thinking, I'm like, these guys are probably, they've probably had a tough life. They're probably not going to be that talkative. They're probably not going to be, and these were my own judgments. I'm like, thinking, I'm like, they're probably just going to, maybe they're just thinking, oh, cool, I get an hour that I'm not in my cell. So I'm going to just, it was the exact opposite. They had so many questions. They had so many stories about what they experienced in the meditations. And it was just, God, it was probably one of the most intense moments teaching. Uh, I mean, I've taught a lot, obviously, you know, in, in corporations and those are great, but to, uh, to teach these guys or to hear their stories and to see how it was really changing their lives. And some of them had meditated before. So they're like, uh, so they were becoming familiar with my style of meditation, uh, my guided meditations. And some of them had never meditated before. They'd heard about it. And, you know, I talked about what meditation is in this talk. Uh, and then they just came alive. And it was just so fascinating. And they all shared everyone. There was not one person that was quiet that just kind of sat in the background. They all shared and they were all respectful and kind. And it was just probably one of the most beautiful nights of my life. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. You, you know, and, and I've, I've always had, and I, I still do have, um, people in my life that have become incarcerated that I write to. And one of the things that I do in my letters to them is I write long descriptions of nice. the outside, what it's like, where I live and what the birds sound like and things like this, because their, their imaginative minds are very vivid because they have a lot of time to spend there. So I'll bet that this was really powerful for them. Well, the other thing to that point, and I love that you do that because that you're absolutely 100% right. But if I think about the things that meditation has taught me is that if we are all indeed connected, then that means, and I believe that obviously, that if you are incarcerated, if you are in a cell, you are not in your cell you have access to the energy of the entire world. And if we have this connection, that means even if our senses say you are in a cell, our soul is connected to everything. And it says, you're free. Whether you are in a cell or not, you're as free as you want to be and can be. And I think that's one of the reasons I enjoy teaching meditation to people that are incarcerated to help them understand. I'm like, yeah, in your world, in your perception, you're in a cell. But that's just a perception. That's just a thought. And it's just as false or just as illusory as any other thought. 
you can take your mind, you can be anywhere in the world. So yes, in the confines of society, of modern thought, you're a man in a cell. But the reality is you are genderless and zipping about the world. And with a meditation practice, you can experience that. And I think that's why each one of them was so open and talking about all the things they experienced. In fact, one of the guys um, that I was talking with, he's like, he's like, I hope you don't feel bad. He's like, I was listening to your voice and I, uh, I got transported to like, I was on a boat and I was with uh, friends of mine and we we're out in the middle of the ocean. We were just tooling around on in this motorboat. And it was, so he's like, I started out on the beach, like you said, uh, but I just took my own journey. I'm like, sweet. That's exactly what I was hoping for. <laughs> so stories like that, that just uh, brought a tear to my eye. Tremendously powerful. And can you talk about your mission for the world? Because you talked about wanting to bring meditation to a million people. Can you talk about what it is that you want as an effect of that? Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for that question, because it is the very driving force of why I do what I do. And as I mentioned earlier, when I was younger, if somebody said, you're going to be teaching meditation. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm going to be a psychologist. I'm going to own a restaurant. I'm going to be a magician. I'm going to be a veterinarian. <laughs> and uh, one of the things real briefly, like when I wake up, it's not even a question of why am I here? I'm like, this is why I'm here. And to your overall question and just, my life has been such a gift and I've experienced challenges just like anybody, but I'm always able because of my meditation to see life as a gift. And when I think about that and when I had this epiphany about leaving fidelity and like, I can't not give back to the world. My life has been such a blessing. I can't keep this all to myself. So if there's ever a way, and I know there is that I can help people suffer less if I can help people understand their power so they never feel um, that they are have their back against the wall and that they're in a situation that is not of their own choosing, that they have the ability to, to create whatever reality or whatever life that they want, then that's exactly how I pay, pay the world back for all that it's given me. And... 